are you ready to make some big changes in your life? In this video, we're diving into 11 things you might be doing that you should stop right now. We want you to come along with us on this journey. Tell us how you feel about each point we discuss and make sure to stick with us till the very end. You're about to embark on a journey of self-discovery that could really shake things up for you. We're here to help you see things differently and start living your best life. So, are you in? Let's get going. 1. Handling Hurtful Relationships First off, if someone's been hurting you, don't feel like you have to explain yourself to them. Arguing or fighting over their bad behavior isn't worth your time. Even if you thought they were a good friend but they ended up disrespecting you, it's okay to just walk away. Keep your cool and focus on your own growth. There might come a time when they need you and it's totally fine to say no. And if you ever feel like you need to tell them why, go ahead. But remember, if they didn't respect you before, you don't owe them anything now. Avoid getting into any drama. The best move is to quietly cut them out of your life and let time show them the consequences. Take care of yourself and let the future sort things out. Moving on without feeling the need to explain or justify our choices shows a lot of respect for ourselves and our own boundaries. It's important to remember that we don't have to stick around people who hurt us or don't see our worth. Everyone deserves to be treated with kindness and to be around those who really see us for who we are. Choosing to quietly step away from those who have hurt us is a brave step towards our own happiness and growth, leading us to a more genuine and satisfying life. 2. Unnecessary Goals Let's talk about goals that don't really fit us anymore. Ever feel like you're chasing something because you think you should, not because you want to? It's totally normal to change direction and let go of goals that don't match up with who you are now. You don't have to tell the whole world about it or leave hints everywhere. Keeping your plans to yourself is smart. Slowly step back from goals that aren't serving you and make changes in your life quietly. As you adjust your plans, remember to keep things on the down low, protecting your strategies and staying true to yourself. Now, about friendships and relationships, it's super important to keep things private, especially when things end. The details of why you're no longer friends or partners with someone are just between the two of you. No one else needs to know all the ins and outs. Spreading this stuff around can lead to gossip and make things messier. If you need to talk, have a heart-to-heart -heart with yourself. Wanting to share might mean you've still got some healing to do. So, take a step back and think things through on your own. If there's a relationship in your life that's not working, it's okay to end it without telling the world. Keeping it to yourself helps you process and move on. Plus, it keeps everyone's dignity intact. When things get heated or you're feeling super frustrated, try your best not to lose your cool, especially in front of others. Instead of letting anger take over, channel that energy into something positive. Maybe use it to push yourself towards your goals or to get through a tough workout. Think about what's making you mad and see if you can turn it into something that makes you stronger. But do it quietly without making a big scene. This way, you protect yourself from showing too much and keep focused on what's good in your life. Finding a quiet way to deal with stress helps you stay balanced and ready to handle whatever comes next. So, are you seeing a pattern here? It's all about making moves quietly and focusing on what's best for you. Let us know in the comments if any of these points hit home for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more advice on living your best life. Stick with us, and let's keep this journey going. 3. Privacy in Relationships When things don't work out and you go your separate ways, it's really important to keep the details to yourself. The reasons why you're not friends or partners with someone anymore are personal, just between you and them. Spreading this around can end up causing more trouble and hurt feelings. Think about it this way. 
If you had a special secret with a friend, you wouldn't go around telling everyone, right? The same idea applies here. Keeping quiet about why a relationship ended shows a lot of respect for what you and the other person shared. Plus, it helps you move on in a healthier way. If you're feeling upset and really want to talk about it, try writing down your thoughts or talking to yourself about it. This can help you understand your feelings better without making the situation bigger by involving others. It's like giving yourself a hug and taking care of your own heart. If a friendship or relationship is causing you more sadness than happiness, it's okay to end it. But doing so quietly, without making a big scene or involving others, is usually the best way. This keeps your business just that, yours, and helps everyone move on with dignity. So, remember, when it comes to private matters of the heart, keeping things to yourself is often the kindest and wisest choice. It protects you, respects the other person, and lets everyone heal and find their own peace. 4. Managing Tension You know those times when you're just so mad you could scream? Well, it's super important to try not to lose your cool, especially in front of other people. Instead of letting all that anger out in a way that might cause more problems, try to find a positive way to deal with it. Imagine using that angry energy for something good. Maybe you could go for a run, write in a journal, or do something creative. It's like taking all that hot, angry energy and turning it into something that can help you instead of hurt you or someone else. But here's the key. Do it quietly. You don't need to make a big show out of it. By staying calm on the outside, you protect yourself from saying or doing things you might regret later. Plus, it gives you time to cool down and think about what's really bothering you. Maybe there's a way to fix it without getting into a fight. So, next time you're feeling super frustrated, remember it's okay to feel that way. But try to find a quiet, positive way to deal with it. This can help you feel better and keep your relationships with friends and family smooth. It's all about finding balance and not letting anger take the driver's seat. 5. Avoiding Negative Judgments It's really easy to fall into the trap of saying not-so-nice things about someone, especially when they're not around. But think about it. How does it really help us or them? Spoiler. It doesn't. Instead of spreading negative vibes by talking badly about someone, try to hold back and think about the good stuff. If you don't like someone, it's okay. You don't have to be best friends with everyone. But you also don't need to spread negativity about them. It's like this. Every time we say something mean about someone else, it's like adding a little bit of trash to our own backyard. It doesn't make anywhere nicer to be, right? So, instead of throwing around trash talk, let's keep our yards clean. If you're having a problem with someone, the best thing to do is talk to them directly. It's not always easy, but it's the bravest and most respectful thing to do. And remember, you can always choose to walk away or change the subject if someone else starts talking negatively. It's a way of saying, hey, Let's not fill our time with negativity. This not only helps create a nicer environment for everyone, but also shows you're someone who respects others, even when they're not there. By focusing on the positive and treating others with kindness, even when it's about people we're not exactly fond of, we help build a friendlier, more understanding world. It's all about treating others the way we want to be treated, even in the words we use when they're not around. Six. Halting comparisons. Heading into the topic of comparing ourselves to others, it's something we all do from time to time. But it's really not helpful. Everyone's life is different, and trying to measure your own success or happiness by looking at someone else's is like comparing apples to oranges. It just doesn't make sense. This habit can make us feel bad about ourselves and distract us from noticing all the good things we have going on in our own lives. Imagine if you spent all your time worrying about why you don't have the same things as your neighbor or friend, like a bigger house or a newer phone. 
you'd miss out on enjoying what you do have, right? Instead of looking over the fence to see what's on the other side, try to focus on your own yard. Celebrate your own achievements, no matter how small they might seem. Got through a tough day? That's awesome. Finished a project you've been working on? Celebrate it. The thing is, when we stop comparing ourselves to others, we start to feel more content with what we have. It's like finally enjoying your own garden without worrying about how green the grass is somewhere else. This shift in focus can make a huge difference in how happy and satisfied we feel. So next time you catch yourself comparing your life to someone else's, try to remember that your journey is unique. You have your own strengths, challenges, and achievements. Embrace them and keep moving forward on your own path, celebrating every step of the way. This way, you build up your confidence and find happiness in your own life, free from unnecessary comparisons. 7. Mindful Social Media Use Jumping into how we use social media, it's like a giant highlight reel of everyone's best moments, but it's not the full story. Spending too much time scrolling through these highlights can make us feel like we're not keeping up or that our lives don't measure up. That's why it's super important to use social media in a way that's good for us, not something that makes us feel worse. Think of social media as a tool, kind of like a library where you can pick and choose what you want to look at. You don't have to read every book or look at every picture, right? Set some limits for yourself, like only checking your feeds at certain times of the day or following accounts that make you feel positive and inspired. This way, you're in control, not your phone. And here's a little trick. Ask yourself why you're scrolling. Are you bored? Looking for a pick-me-up? Or maybe you're just in the habit of checking your phone without even thinking about it. If you find yourself feeling down after being on social media, it might be a sign to take a break and do something else you enjoy, like going for a walk, reading a book, or hanging out with friends in real life. The key is to make sure that social media is adding to your life, not taking away from it. By being mindful about how and when we use it, we can enjoy the good parts without letting it get us down. Remember, your worth isn't measured by likes, comments, or followers. Your real life, the one you live off the screen, is where the true magic happens. Let's make sure we're not missing out on that by being too caught up in the digital world. 8. Seeking Internal Approval it's something we all do, but imagine how freeing it would be if we didn't worry so much about what everyone else thinks. Often we find ourselves doing things or acting a certain way just because we think it'll make others like us more. But what if we just focused on being true to ourselves instead? Living for approval means you're always on a stage, performing. You try to wear the right costume, say the right lines, and make sure the audience is happy. But that's exhausting, isn't it? It's like you're playing a part instead of being who you really are. The real joy comes when you step off that stage and just be yourself without worrying about the applause. Starting to value your own opinion more than others can seem tough, but you can do it step by step. Before making a decision, ask yourself, am I doing this for me or for someone else? Trusting your gut and recognizing your own needs and wants is key. Celebrate your victories, learn from your mistakes, and remember that it's okay to be perfectly imperfect. It's also super important to surround yourself with people who love and accept you for who you are, not for who they want you to be. These are the folks who will cheer you on, even when you decide to dance to your own tune, rather than the one everyone else is dancing to. Breaking free from the need for constant external validation opens up a whole new world of authenticity and self-confidence. You start writing your own script, living a life that's true to you and not just performing for an audience. And that's where real happiness lies, not in the applause, but in the peace of knowing you're being true to yourself. 9. Relationship Discretion 
Diving into how we handle the end of relationships, it's really important to remember that some things are better kept private. Whether it's a friendship that's fizzled out or a romantic relationship that's come to an end, the details of why things didn't work out should remain between you and the other person involved. Sharing these intimate details with others might seem like a quick way to find support or validation, but it often leads to more hurt feelings and misunderstandings. Think of each relationship like a personal book you've written with another person. Once the story ends, it's not necessary to read it aloud to everyone. Instead, honor the chapters you shared by keeping them to yourselves. This shows respect for what you had and for the privacy of both parties involved. If you're feeling hurt or confused and really need to talk about it, consider turning to a trusted friend who can offer support without judgment. Better yet, reflecting on the relationship and its closure on your own or with a professional can provide the space you need to heal and grow from the experience. When a relationship ends, it's a sign that it's time to look inward and focus on your own growth and well-being. It's an opportunity to learn more about who you are and what you need in relationships moving forward. Keeping the details private helps you move on more gracefully, allowing both you and the other person to start new chapters with a clean slate. So remember, while it's natural to want to share and process your feelings, there's a lot of strength and dignity in handling the end of relationships with discretion and respect. It not only protects your privacy, but also aids in the healing process, making it easier for everyone to move forward. 10. Letting go of unrealistic expectations. Sometimes without even realizing it, we set the bar way too high for ourselves, our friends, or even the situations we find ourselves in. When these sky-high expectations aren't met, we end up feeling disappointed or like we've failed. But here's the thing. Life isn't about hitting every mark perfectly. It's about enjoying the ride, learning and growing along the way. Imagine expecting every day to be perfect. You'd miss out on the beauty of the little moments, right? It's like expecting a garden to bloom all year round. Nature doesn't work that way, and neither does life. So, instead of getting hung up on what should happen, try to take things as they come. Celebrate the good, learn from the challenges, and remember that progress, not perfection, is what really matters. Start by recognizing when you're holding on to these unrealistic expectations. Ask yourself, is this really doable, or am I setting myself up for disappointment? Adjusting your expectations doesn't mean you're giving up on your dreams. It just means you're giving yourself a fair chance to achieve them, step by step, without the unnecessary pressure. It's also helpful to practice gratitude for where you are right now. Even on the tough days, there's always something small to be thankful for, like a cozy cup of tea or a message from a friend. This mindset shift can make a big difference in how you view your life and your goals. So remember, letting go of unrealistic expectations isn't about lowering your standards. It's about making peace with the fact that life is unpredictable and imperfect. And that's okay. It's about finding joy and fulfillment in the journey, not just the destination. 11. Avoiding gossip and negativity. When we share or listen to gossip about others, it might seem harmless or even a way to connect with friends, but it actually does more harm than good. Gossip spreads negativity and can hurt people's feelings, including our own. It's like planting weeds in a garden. They can quickly take over and ruin all the beautiful things growing there. Think about it this way. Every time you say something positive and supportive about someone, you're planting a seed of kindness and respect. But when you choose to gossip or say negative things, it's like scattering seeds for weeds that will grow and spread. So, what can you do instead? Try to be mindful of the conversations you're part of. If the talk starts turning negative or gossipy, gently steer it back to something positive or change the subject altogether. 
This doesn't mean you can't have deep or meaningful conversations about difficult topics, but it's about approaching these topics with care and respect for everyone involved. Practicing empathy is key here. Before sharing something about someone, ask yourself how you'd feel if someone said the same about you. Would it hurt? Would it feel unfair? This simple question can help guide you toward more positive and constructive conversations. Building a positive environment starts with us. By choosing not to participate in gossip and focusing on spreading positivity, we encourage others to do the same. It's like watering the good plants in the garden and pulling out the weeds. Over time, this creates a more supportive and understanding community for everyone. In summary, avoiding gossip and negative talk isn't just about being nice. It's about creating a culture of kindness and respect. It's a way to ensure that our words and actions contribute to building others up, not tearing them down. And in doing so, we make our own lives and the lives of those around us a little brighter. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to receive notifications of new videos, and, of course, leave a like and comment. I'll leave two more videos which will now appear on your screen. Enjoy your journey to wisdom. Stay with the Creator.